what we do is we put a layer of compost down um, and plant directly into that and, and allow the earthworms and all the other organisms to do their work for us. So if you stand on it, then that compacts it and then it makes it much harder for the roots to grow. Um, so we just don't stand on it at all. And the only time, the two times, one when we might be digging a new bed, we would um, really break up um, the soil first so that we could um, then get the beds on top of it and then we'd have a new dig after that. Um, then there's, and then there's um, the fifth year of our rotation, which is when we have in an organic system to rotate um, the crops prevents the build-up of pests and disease. Um, it also allows you to use the soil most efficiently. Um, different plants have different needs and demands from the soil. So something like brassicas, which are the cabbage family, um, have so we plant the leaves that we plant from that family are things like rocket, mitsuno. This is turnip tops. They ha they're quite hungry plant, and so what we do is we follow. We do a green manures year where the um, we're fixing nitrogen, we plant, um, plant plants that fix nitrogen, like all the legumes, so clover, um, fix nitrogen into the soil. Things like ryegrass that go right down deep, much deeper than the um, salad crops that we grow and bring nutrients up from, from way down. Um, and then just allowing other things to have their turn on the side. So things like little puppies and stuff like that, just to attract um, insects and things. Um, so that year, once, once that year is done and all the crop um, has grown well, we'll dig it in and that's the only other time that we'll dig in. Um, but then um, if you're here on one of those days, you'll get some good training on, on how to do that and, and how to do that without standing on the beds as well, because that's really important. So um, as I was saying earlier, with the salad bag that we do, that's a good mix of leaves. Um, we have a five-year rotation. We have, um, which, as I was saying, allows us to grow organically here. We have brassicas, followed by things in the lettuce family, so that would be lettuces or chicory or endive. Um, then followed by things in the goosefoot family, so um, which is the spinach family. Things like chard, um, spinach, red orange, which you can see in that bed there, that nice purpley looking plant. Um, and then we have a year where we just have, which we call others, which we just put anything else that isn't in those families, but that will make our salad bag taste really good. So we think the salad bag should have lots of taste and flavour and texture in it, and that gives us like lots of different um, tastes. Um, I don't know, so in that year we might grow parsley or leaf celery or sorrel. Um, sorrel does really well in this kind of thing. We've got sorrel along the edge. Then we've also got sorrel that's gone to flower. That's it's almost its time. And next week, pull that all out and put in green manure so it starts um, regenerating the soil again. So that's the annual bed. Um, you'll also see um, flowers around. So we kind of put little strips of flowers on the beds, and that's part of our kind of integrated pest management. So. Um, we're attracting the predators right directly to the place where we want them to do the work for us. So things like hoverflies and lacewings, ladybirds, um, we'll be attracting them so that they can eat the aphids that like to eat our plants. Um, and so that gives them a good food source. So, um, What is the plant? So the one along there is actually <coughs> sage. Okay. The, but then there's daisies there, there's, we've got violas, we've got some of the serpents coming on there. Well, the yellow at the end, the blue um, flowers. And we also, we grow things that are both, I mean it's a multifunctional permaculture, whereas to have um, plants, flowers that we can also pick and put into the salad bag, which is also another indication of how ultra-local the salad bag is. I mean the salad is one of the most perishable um, crops that we grow. We, we'll pick it today and by tomorrow. I mean, because do you, what do you? We plant we plant things that would overwinter. Um, some um, things like uh, chicory, 
um, in the um, cabbage family or plant things like mustard, um, leaf mustard, um, chard does quite well over winter as well. They don't grow so much, they just sit. Right. Um, we'll, we kind of slow down towards the end of November and then let the gardens rest kind of January, December. Yeah. And well, the plants rest and we do yeah. kind of structural things around and just sorting out various things that during the growing season we just don't have time to do. Yeah. Um, but we do go right down. So we'll go from about at the moment we're harvesting about um, doing about 270 bags of salad a week, um, and then in winter, November, end of November, we'll be doing 30. What, what size are those bags? They're 100 gram. Bags. And how big is this site? Well, this site plus the uh, two plus others, the other two, right? Yeah. So we've got half an acre in total. Mm. One of the sites are out of commission at the moment a little bit because um, Clissold Park had some um, funding to read about the site so we've had to move it so it's just from these two sites at the moment so it's quite it's quite um, productive and what what's also good about the salad is that we're, we we choose varieties that you just pluck and you just take from the plant each week and it can be cropping for about three months um, and then we'll replace it with something else when it's when it's really had enough and it's done its job for us so so you can just keep cropping through the season, which is great. Mm -hmm. So that's the annual beds.